Hey guys, it is Friday here in West Virginia, and as promised, we're bringing you an unboxing of the newly released Hot Wheels Elite 64 LBWK Lamborghini Aventador LP700 slash dot four, whatever you want to call it. And so, anyways, uh, this is a very, very nice model. As you can see, I ordered several of them. Uh, I thought it was going to be a sellout. But I was wrong. They're still available at uh, MattelCreations.com. If you're interested in getting one, they're only 20 bucks. Well worth the money. I think you have to be a member to get them, but I'm not 100% sure. You may be able to just log on and buy one, even if you're not a member. Uh, if you run into the issue, you want one, and you have to be a member, and you're not a member, uh, just message me. I have these. And I'm not really uh, inflating the price too much. I will sell these at 30 bucks plus whatever the shipping is. I have them on my eBay um, store too. So if you want to use eBay, that's fine. They're the same price there. The only thing with eBay, you have to pay the taxes. If you buy direct from me off of IG, uh, then it's only going to be 30 bucks plus whatever the ride is so anyways uh these are on a car culture style card and i'm going to show you um the difference in the card sizes i brought out this is probably my only rlc car that i have that is not ripped open but i do have one that is already cracked open that's why this one has survived and not been cracked open yet but anyways um as you can see like the size of the card maybe i don't know half an inch three quarters of an inch wider and uh i'm not sure why they use those cards because it really you could fit them on the standard size card and that would be good enough in my opinion but anyways, um, they do supply you with a Protecto Pack, and it is the Hot Wheels embossed Protecto for the large cards, which is nice. Uh, let's open the Protecto and get this guy out so we don't have so much reflection. And we'll take a look at the card together. And... As you can see, it's very nicely done. The Forgiato style wheels are nicely done. All the body lines are nice. It has side mirrors, which is a nice plus for me. And you have your name, LBWK, Lamborghini Aventador, LP700-4. And with a number four here, this is the fourth one in the Elite series. This is the first Elite that I have bought. I didn't buy any of the other ones. I think the next one that I'll buy will be the Land Rover that's coming up. I think I'll pass on the Mustang. It just looks like a little bit overkill um, to me. But this one and the Land Rover will be another one that I will buy. Now on the back side, you have your back window too. So you can see every single angle inside of the car. Front, back, both sides. And then... On the back, it just tells you the name once again, the Lamborghini Aventador LP700-4, and where it was born in the country of origin, the, where the body kit came from, and when it was produced from 2011 until now. And then these other statistics, they kind of lacked on giving you any statistics of the length, the width, the height, the weight, which would have probably been easy to obtain, but they didn't give them to you. Uh, then the engine, it is custom twin turbo, 6.5 liter V12. The transmission is an automated single clutch manual seven speed. Then it has all of your licensing stuff from Mattel, from Lamborghini, from Liberty Walk, and hotwheelscollectors.com is where you can find this and blah 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 upc code and so forth so i did order five of these i did sell one already so i still have four left and i've already cracked one as you can see he is right here so we're going to take a look at him up close and such 
So let's move these back into the background here. And we're going to also bring back this guy as promised and take a detailed look at them side by side. Even though it isn't a Huracan, not an Aventador, it'll still give you a basic idea. So, as you can see here, um, all the body lines are done very nicely. You have like the co-sponsor decals on your side skirts. Then you have your catchphrase of imagine all the people living life in peace uh, on the door. The mirrors are there, which is cool, but they are hard plastic, so they are probably not going to be so durable. The front is nicely done with the Lamborghini emblem on the header. The front mesh is there in the front bumper cover. The headlights are just tampos. And nice detail with the dash and such. Uh, and then the gauge cluster you can see the dome there so it is going to be a left hand drive and once again nice detail on the forgiata wheels and this is not a push on wheel like the mini gt it is through the wheel style axle with the mushroom tips as typically used by hot wheels um and then going around back, you have nice detail on the tail lights and the rear mesh here. And then the tail lights almost do look like it is red acrylic inserts. So that's pretty cool. And then you have detachable rear bumper cover and wing and smoked engine cover here. So, and this paint is a little bit different than the standard Mini GT stuff that was used. And I'll show you that when we get the other guy back out. It's like a metal flake and light blue, and it is slightly darker. So I'm not sure which one is more accurate. I'm going to say the Mini GT is more accurate because in pictures of, like, the Ken Mary that Keto has and the... R35 and such, they look very similar to the light blue that Mini GT uses. So anyways, the wing is very easy. It just kind of pulls right off. It just kind of pushes right in. That's it. Comes right off. No snaps, nothing like that. So you don't have to worry about it really getting worn out or breaking little nipples off. So, And then the cover, it just kind of pulls off too very easily now these are plastic these pieces this is not die cast and then when you pull this off it's very cool it gives you the look at the twin turbos with the detailed exhaust and such so very very cool uh detail there and then the engine cover does pull off and this is a little bit harder to get off so I just use something to push up on it, as you can see, and then flip it over and it pops off. Then you have your cross braces there, the top of the engine detail there. So this is very cool. I mean, it's a very nice detail. I know a lot of people are criticizing, no big deal about these removable parts, but I do think it adds a nice touch to the die cast comparing to other models. So I will say Hot Wheels Beat Mini GT on that with the engine detail and the removable parts. And one thing with this Hot Wheels, one, they did not lose any of the accuracy on the body lines because of these removable parts. So that is pretty cool. And anyways, let's go ahead and get the Huracan back out and do a look at them and the pros and cons of both. So, now, as I said, it does look like Mini GT is a little more accurate with the paint. Because I don't think the real one has heavy metal flake, but I may be wrong. I'm not sure. The Inventador could be slightly different than the Huracan and the Skylines. Now, the detail on the wheels, pretty much the same with both manufacturers. So that's pretty good. And then the tread on the tires both have that. Now the detailed bases. 
Uh, I think actually the Mini GT is a little bit more detailed than the Hot Wheels and the base. And the advantage of the Mini GT is that it is fastened together with button head Phillips style screws so you can take it apart easily. Whereas the Hot Wheels is riveted so it does not come apart too easily. So wheel swapping, it would be difficult where this is very simple. You can wheel swap it and then wheel swap it back to factory without damaging anything. The Hot Wheels, you couldn't do that with. Uh, the accuracy of the scale by both manufacturers, I think, is very true to scale. I think the Aventador is bigger than the Huracan. That's why I wish I had the Huracan or the Aventador for Mini GT to do an actual 100% accurate comparison. But I don't. So, and then the rear engine cover and the, like, the top of the engine detail is there too with the uh, Mini GT. It's not removable, but you have the clear kind of smoked look to the glass and you have the top of the engine there and it is fairly detailed now the mini gt has the rubberized mirrors which is very nice i think that is a little bit better because it will not break so easily uh not that we're going to be playing with these or anything but you will be showing them to people and moving them around and maybe taking pics and things like that so um that is the one advantage about rubber mirrors now the only thing with the wheels that i will criticize is that the push run style, like from Mini GT, gives the center of the hub more accuracy than the Hot Wheels. So that's the one advantage of the push run style. Uh, but the through the wheel style has, very rarely bends the axle, so usually it rolls fairly good. But really, guys, they're both very nice models. And the downside about the Adventador from Mini GT, as I pointed out in my other videos, and the reason I didn't keep my last one that I purchased, the paint rashing thing and the paint defects and such, that I think is going to be a problem with the light blue, the black, and the volcano yellow, and then the red uh, Japan exclusive. Now, the latest uh, Infinite Motorsports one, I think that will be okay. Maybe they fixed it because it did not come out of the Bangladesh factory. That's the downsides of the Mini GT Aventador. But if you did get one early when it was first released and you opened it, then you probably don't have any issues with paint rashing. Just probably the issues with a little bit of the... Uh, paint spots or defects in the casting where it's kind of more porous on the hood so you have these little indentations imperfections but on the roof on the sides of the car you probably do not have any of the paint rash like the one that i opened a few months ago um because you it has not been stored that long that's the problem i think they're stored in hot humid conditions and that plastic uh tray this thing here has an adverse reaction to the paint and causes it to start rashing. So anyways, that's the downsides of the Mini GT one compared to the Hot Wheels. The prices are about the same. Uh, the Elite is 20 bucks. The Mini GT stuff roughly is about 15 bucks. But nowadays, because of the secondary market thing and the scarceness of the uh, light blue one, it's probably going to cost you about 20 or 25 bucks, and then you're risking getting one with the paint rash. I would buy one loose if I wanted one from Mini GT. That's just my opinion. Uh, so, guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope this kind of filled you in. If you should buy one or not, I would highly recommend it. Uh, as I said, if you don't have the Mini GT one already, this one is just as good, if not better. And you don't have to risk getting one with paint rash if it's sealed. So that's the advantage of buying the Hot Wheels one and plugging it into your collection uh, instead of having the Mini GT one. So anyways, guys, that's it for our Free It Friday. And as you can see, why we did the Huracan yesterday is part of our Free It 
free Friday. So we'll be back on Monday with our regular Mopar Monday. So enjoy your weekend, guys, and we'll see you on Monday.